During the First World War, hundreds of thousands of Indian soldiers fought for the defense of the British Empire in the Middle East and Western Europe. Indian leaders, including Gandhiji, supported the war efforts. They helped in recruitment to the armed forces with the hope that the declaration of the British Prime Minister that the principles of self-determination would be applied to every nation, big or small, would also include India. Ironically, instead of keeping their promise, the Raj was suppressing Indian nationalism with the help of the draconian Defense of India Act. At this juncture, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi started to change the course of Indian history. The success of Gandhiji's mission in Champaran created a sensation throughout India. Gandhi became a symbol of uncompromising truth, fearlessness, and non-violence. Jawaharlal Nehru has said, Gandhi influenced millions of people in India in varying degrees. He made the Congress democratic and a mass movement. Around this time, the Home Rule League had adopted self-government as its final objective. For an early realization of the goal, Annie Besant, Tilak, and other leaders toured all over the country. Annie Besant spelt out India's aspiration and the claims for Swaraj in her weekly Common Wheel and the daily paper New India. Annie Besant's activities alarmed the government. She and her close associates were interned at Uttakamand. The entire country resented the government action and the movement found widespread support. Eminent leaders, Motilal Nehru, Tej Bahadur Sapru, C.R. Das, Jinnah, Bulabhai Desai, M.R. Jaikar joined the Home Rule League. Annie Besant was released after three months. On 20th August, 1917, the new Secretary of State for India, Montague, declared the policy of His Majesty's government to be the gradual development of self-governing institutions with a view to the progressive realization of responsible government in India. In November 1917, Montague visited India to hold talks with the Viceroy and Indian leaders. Annie Besant was elected president for the 1917 Calcutta session of the Congress. Gurudev Tagore headed the reception committee. The Congress demanded that a time limit be fixed for establishment of responsible government in India. Annie Besant declared that her fate was to see India free, to hear her hold up her head among the nations and said, India shall soon be proud and self-reliant, strong and free. In February 1918, the mill workers of Ahmedabad went on strike, demanding better wages and working conditions. Their trade union leader was Ansu Yaban, sister of the leader of the mill owners, Ambalal Sarabhai. On her request, Gandhiji agreed to help bring about an agreement between the mill owners and the workers. Gandhiji found that the workers had a strong case. He advised them never to resort to violence, never to molest black legs, and to remain firm no matter how long the strike continued. Negotiations continued for several days. When the workers appeared to be wavering in their resolve, Gandhiji undertook a fast. 
it had the desired effect. An agreement was reached between the workers and the mill owners to appoint an arbitrator. Gandhiji asked the workers to accept an increase of 35% against their demand of 50%. The 21-day-old strike was called off. There was crop failure in Kaira district of Gujarat due to heavy floods. Famine conditions were developing. Cultivators requested the government to suspend revenue assessment for the year, but the officials insisted on collection. Mohanlal Pandya, leader of the farmers, turned to Gandhiji for help. After visiting the villages, Gandhiji asked the authorities to hold an impartial inquiry. When it was rejected, Gandhiji launched Satyagraha, a no-tax campaign. Balamhai Patel gave up his lucrative legal practice and joined Gandhiji, along with Shankamlal Banker, Indulal Yagnik and Mahadev Desai. The farmers signed a declaration that they will not pay any taxes. Officials retaliated by seizing their movable properties. They attached standing crops, buffaloes, gold and silver ornaments, utensils and other household goods. In spite of threats, repression and sufferings, the Kaira farmers remained firm in their resolve. The government gave in. Gandhiji admired the people of Kaira for their fearlessness, unity, determination and sacrifice. Towards the end of the war, the Muslims of India were agitated over the faith of the Caliph, the Sultan of Turkey. A Khilafat committee consisting of Hindus and Muslims pleaded with England to impose moderate peace terms on Turkey. Speaking on the need for Hindu-Muslim unity to support the Khilafat, Gandhiji said, the test of friendship is true assistance in adversity. The Montague Chelmsford reforms were announced in July 1918 the nationalists strongly condemned the recommendations. Tillock called the reforms unsatisfactory and disappointing. Annie Basant said that it was ungenerous of England to offer and unworthy of India to accept. A special session of the Congress held in Bombay on the 27th of August 1918 with Hassan Imam in the chair declared that while some proposals were good, the reforms as a whole were disappointing and unsatisfactory. The Home Rule League tried to send deputations to England to explain the Indian point of view. They were prevented by the British authorities. After the intervention of the Viceroy, Tillock was permitted to go. In London, he established contacts with a large number of members of the British Parliament. In order to suppress the freedom movement, the British government appointed a committee under Justice Rowlett to investigate and report on the nature and extent of criminal conspiracies connected with revolutionary movement in India. The main intention, however, was to retain on the statute certain portions of the Defence of India Act under which the administration enjoyed vast powers. The Rowlett Act became operative on March the 21st, 1919. It gave extraordinary powers to the government and provided for strong punitive and preventive measures, as well as expeditious trial of revolutionaries 
with no right to appeal. The act was described by Indian leaders as unjust, subversive of the principles of liberty and justice, and destructive of elementary rights. The Congress requested Gandhiji to take up the leadership and organize a countrywide agitation against the act. A Satyagraha Sabha was formed at Sabarmati under the presidentship of Gandhiji. He started a publication, Satyagraha, which was immediately proscribed by the government. People signed a pledge which stated, we shall refuse civilly to obey these laws and further affirm that in the struggle we shall faithfully follow truth and refrain from violence to life, person and property. Gandhiji announced that Satyagraha would be launched on the 30th of March, 1919. Although the date for the Hartal had been changed, various parts of the country observed it on the 30th of March. <laughs> Village officials resigned their jobs. There was complete accord between Hindus and Muslims as they worked together. Swami Shraddhananda delivered a speech at the Jama Masjid. Gandhiji, Sarojini Naidu, Surendranath Banerjee and others addressed prayer meetings in other mosques. On the 6th of April, countrywide Hartal was observed against the Black Bell, which was a national humiliation. All activities were suspended. The administrative machinery was paralyzed. On the night of the 7th of April, Gandhiji was traveling to Amritsar. He was prohibited from entering Punjab. Gandhiji was taken out of the train and sent to Bombay. The editor of the Bombay Chronicle, B.G. Horniman, was an ardent supporter of India's struggle for freedom. When deported, he wrote to Gandhiji, They are taking me away at last. I have been rushed for without notice. God speed you in your work for the Indian people. Gandhiji asked the people of Bombay to register their protest against Horniman's deportation by observing Hartal. 9th of April, 1919, Ramnavmi was celebrated all over Punjab as a day of communal harmony between Hindus and Muslims. Peaceful processions created a sense of unity and national consciousness. The governor of Punjab, Michael O'Dyer, became jittery. The district magistrate of Amritsar ordered two respected leaders, Dr. Satyapal and Dr. Saifuddin Kichlu, to be deported to Dharamshala. This led to a spontaneous hartal. The police opened fire. The peaceful procession turned violent. Several buildings and institutions were set on fire. Some European lives were lost. The governor handed over the city to the army. Major General Dyer clamped curfew on Amritsar. There were indiscriminate arrests and public flogging. People were made to crawl while passing the house of one Miss Sherwood, who had been killed during the riot. General Dyer issued a vague order which prohibited gatherings and meetings. The order was not communicated to the people but only displayed in some parts of the city. On Baisakhi Day, the 13th of April, 1919, over 20,000 persons gathered at Jallianwala Bagh for the celebration and to express their grief for those killed in police firing. When the peaceful meeting was in progress, General Dyer entered Jallianwala Bagh with 90 fully armed soldiers. 
he deployed soldiers on high ground and immediately ordered them to fire. There was no escape route except a narrow passage. One thousand six hundred and fifty rounds were fired on the peaceful assembly. According to British records, three hundred and seventy-nine persons were killed and nearly one thousand two hundred wounded. A shocking act of brutality, of man's inhumanity against man. The Rojini Naidu's tormented heart cried out in tribute. How shall our love console thee? or assuage thy piteous wound. How shall our grief requite the hate that scourges and the hands that smite thy loveliness with rods of bitter rage? Poet Rabindranath Tagore renounced his knighthood. Several Indians gave up their titles and returned their medals. The governor of Punjab clamped martial law. Students were ordered to parade in front of the government offices and salute the Union Jack every day. Aeroplanes bombed some villages in Gujrawala. The Congress appointed an inquiry committee of its own with C.R. Das, Abbas Tayabji, M.R. Jaikar, and Motilal Nehru. The committee came to the conclusion that the Jallianwala Bagh massacre was a calculated piece of inhumanity towards utterly innocent and unarmed people. On public demand, the Secretary of State appointed a committee under Lord Hunter. General Dyer was asked, when you got into the bar, what did you do? Dyer replied, I opened fire. At once? Immediately. I did not imagine it took me more than 30 seconds to make up my mind. Did you ask the crowd to disperse? I merely felt that my order had not been obeyed and martial law was flouted. It was my duty to fire immediately. The European majority on the committee justified General Dyer's action, but the Indian members were highly critical of General Dyer's inhuman action. At the Amritsar Congress of 1919, Gandhi wore a white cap, which was to become the uniform of our struggle for freedom. It came to be known popularly as the Gandhi Cap. <laughs> Congress President Pandit Motilal Nehru said, The lacerated heart of Punjab calls upon the people of India to unite. Tributes were paid to the memory of the brave sons and daughters of India who perished on that fateful Baisakhi day the 13th of April, 1919. Today, the flame of liberty stands as a mute reminder of their suffering, of their sacrifice. They died so that we could live in freedom.